Hey, welcome back guys. Hope you're all doing well. Today we are back to work on our Precision Guitar Kits build, the one that we're obviously working on now. I won't take a bunch of your time with a big long intro for today's video because this footage was actually, when I filmed it, intended to be part of the last video, but it ended up getting pretty long, pretty cumbersome. So I split it up and I think it's more manageable this way. So in the last video, we did our belly carve and we did a bunch of our rough sanding on the guitar. Now we're gonna do our finish sanding, we're gonna do some grain filling work, that kind of thing, get it all done uh, and ready for paint essentially, and do the neck glue up. So that's what we're taking care of in this video. We should be able to get that done pretty quickly and then in the next one, we'll get onto the painting process. We'll start with some 2K primer and we'll go from there for what I think will be a very interesting finish. I hope you guys enjoy this one, thanks for tuning in. If you haven't seen the last video, check it out. Let's get to it. So we're picking up where we left off here. We did some sanding in our last video. In this one, we're going to do uh, grain filling, sanding, and getting this thing generally ready. So I'll try and give you guys some useful information here, um, but it's also grain filling and sanding for a fair bit of it. So this is all at like 300 times speed. My grain filling process, I have done videos on before, but here you can see how I'm doing it. I've got some gloves on. I am putting some oil-based grain filler from Oxford Supply on there. Love this stuff. Comes in a few different colors. Kind of useless for me to use a color on this one um, because of the paint job we're doing. But hey, I did it anyway because I couldn't find the natural one. I think it's at the shop. So I put some on. I'm using a basically a plastic scraper or a squeegee to spread it around. And for the areas that that doesn't seem like it's going to work very well, I'm just using my fingers. Nothing wrong with that. You could do the whole thing with your fingers. I do recommend wearing gloves for that though. So I've got the nitrile gloves on here. And I'm just trying to make sure that I get basically every area that's going to end up getting painted and that I press this filler down into the grain. Some people like to apply their grain filler with a brush. I'm not saying that that's wrong. Uh, in fact, it's probably a very good method, but I don't like it as much because it, in my view, tends to pull some of the grain filler out of the grain um, or just doesn't do as good a job of pressing it in. And really, that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to fill the grain. This is a mahogany back. It's got a nice open grain. Great for th some things, but when you're, you know, doing op an opaque finish on it, you want a smooth surface, you got to plug that up. This is the easiest way that I have found to do that. So pressing that in uh, around the edges and stuff, you don't need the scraper so much. I haven't found that this particular filler uh, shrinks very much but some do so sometimes it takes a couple applications I would still recommend pressing it into the grain and kind of smoothing it out with something like this plastic scraper or your finger so that you don't end up with a bunch of excess it just makes the sanding stage a lot easier and for me I have found that it's easier to do that and have to do it twice as opposed to ending up with a bunch of ridges that you then need to try and flat sand after so um, yeah, I'm trying to remove all the excess during my application process. Once I'm done that, I give it time to dry. There's recommendations on the can for that. I think I gave this 24 hours or something like that. So I came back the next evening because that's when I have time to do stuff like this. And here I am sanding it. And I'm going to go, this is my like pre-paint finished sanding. So I'm going to go through the grits here starting at 120 and working my way up to either 220 or 320 depending on the area. Um, I might even have started at 100 here and gone 100, 120, 180, 220 or something like that. I didn't film all of it. You don't want to skip big steps between sanding grits though, okay? Start with something reasonable like a 120 grit, get it smooth, and then work your way up. Uh, make sure you're holding your sander flat on the surface when you're using it. Try to avoid using an edge if you can if you can in any way avoid it for the flat areas. In fact, it doesn't hurt to put your sander right on the surface before you even start it. Keeps you from leaving swirl marks and stuff like that. And then when you're doing the by hand sanding portion, you can see I'm trying to use my palm for as much of it as I can, as opposed to using my fingers. That's just better for getting a smoother surface that doesn't have ridges in it. Some of these contours, it can't be avoided. It's tough to sand with your palm sometimes, but that's, in my view, the best option. You want to try and keep things as flat as possible by using larger curves for your sanding block area or your hand area when you're doing it, or using a flat sanding block when you can. Now for the edges, I like using a razor blade. I use it as a scraper. You can see me doing that here. I'm having some trouble getting the camera to focus properly, but I use uh, 
the razor blade to scrape off the excess and flatten it kind of back down to the wood. And you can see how smooth that is. It's almost mirror smooth a little bit. Like it's starting to develop a bit of a sheen when I do that. Um, so what you do need to keep in mind, and this part isn't sped up so you can see how it actually looks. What you need to keep in mind there is that's actually generally too smooth. So I do that to get it nice and flat and even. And then I go over it afterward with something like a 220 or a 320 grit paper depending on the finish to rough it up a little bit you know it still keeps it even and smooth but gives it a little bit of grit so that the paint can stick so I believe I go back over that with a 320 and I know it would have been a 220 in this case because then I came in with a thicker primer so 220 grit is about what I'm aiming for as my finished sanding grit for this entire project um, for the pre-primer stage that I'm at here I'm using 180 grit first because, like I said, you want to go through the standing stages. Uh, 180 on the edges because they're already so smooth that I'm actually roughing them up instead of smoothing them out. And I started with 180 on the face of the guitar as well in this video because I had already gone at it with 120 in my prior video, I think. Or if I didn't film it, I did it without filming it. But anyway, that's where we're at for that. Uh, these contours can be challenging i now have sanding blocks for them from solo music gear uh feel free to check out the link in the description if you want for for stuff from there um, but i didn't have them at the time that i made this video so i just used my fingers both options work the sanding blocks are just a little bit more reliable easier and flatter so now i'm doing the neck glue up uh, this part also isn't sped up there will be some cuts in it but i'm not speeding it up because hey why why not show you how the, the whole thing kind of works here. So for this you can use you know any number of things to spread your glue around. The big manufacturers actually roll it on with a paint roller when they're doing this kind of thing. Um, they put it on the the neck portion rather than the pocket I think mostly but uh, other people like to use things like credit cards and whatnot. I generally just use my fingers and a glove for what I'm doing inside the neck pocket. Uh, I'll use something like a roller or a card when I'm gluing together two large sections. If I'm, you know, creating a body or something like that, that's what I would do. Uh, you don't want to apply too much glue, okay? You need enough to get coverage, but especially if you have a nice tight neck pocket like this one, and this is a very tight neck pocket, you can't apply too much. One, it'll squeeze out, which isn't what you're looking for. That doesn't help anybody. And two it can actually cause the neck pocket to shrink a little bit uh, as the wood expands from the moisture from the glue and then you won't be able to get your neck in so don't do that I'm using tight bond original uh, to do this glue up that's the glue that I find to be the best for this but I you know everybody's got their own opinions on that and there's nothing that really makes me an authority on it that's just the one that I like I'm using some blocks in my cavity my uh, pickup cavity as you can see there I did do a test clamp before applying the glue to this highly recommend that I actually think it's very important if I hadn't done the test clamp I might I may well have thought that I could just go in with the clamps without those blocks because they've got enough depth to get into that hole um, but the way that they line up doesn't quite work because of what's in that cavity so I would have screwed up the routing and stuff that's in there uh, for my wiring so fortunately I did a test glue up I've got a board on the back to protect it of course and I've made sure that that board extends far enough out toward the neck for me to do what I'm doing now so pushing down really hard in that cavity tends to put some pressure on the neck at an angle where it separates a little bit right where that heel joint is so I need to counteract that I don't have to tighten these down very tight but I need to counteract that by putting some pressure on the neck portion and I'm using a radius block to make sure that I'm not putting pressure on a pinch point in the middle of my frets and possibly screwing up their shape. So that's about it guys. Uh, this is the glue up. After this I just need to do a little bit of sanding on that heel and this thing is ready for primer. I, I'll have to tape it of course but we will get to all of that in the next video. So as always thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did please feel free to give it a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you next time.